What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com Back with the next part of our tutorial of bringing a SketchUp model into Lumion and adding all the objects we need to make a photorealistic rendering. So in this video we're going to focus on adding objects and other things on the interior of our model to make it look more realistic. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so if you remember yesterday I made a video about taking all of your landscape objects um, like these trees and putting them on their own layer so that you can turn them off and that's always a good best practice practice for when you're working with something like this um, is to turn off that heavy stuff so that your computer is not sitting here trying to render all of this uh, really heavy geometry. You could also go in and click on disable high quality trees in the editor or turn your editor quality down but in this case I'm just going to turn those trees off and I'm left with just my building right here. And so what we're going to do in this case is we're going to go in and we're going to start adding objects to our building. And so adding objects to your building is what really kind of makes a difference in a uh, your, your model is really looking realistic versus not realistic. And so when you do this, you're just going to go in and you're going to use the different sections for different items. And in this case, we're going to focus on the indoor items. So we're going to click on indoor, we're going to click on place. What we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to find different models that kind of fit what we're looking to do. So in this case, since this is a bedroom, obviously you're going to want to bring in things like a bed. and um, you really kind of want to think about the way that this room is going to be laid out and how a room would actually look. Like for example, if you had a bed here, um, you're probably going to have some kind of wall art that goes up on the wall. So you could add different art or different things like that. So you could add a picture in a frame and there's a whole bunch of those. We'll go ahead and we'll add, eh, that one's a little bit small. We'll go ahead and add this one right here. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to go through and we're just going to add other things in here. So in this case, I'm going to go find a chair, like a comfortable chair that can sit in here. I'm probably going to find a rug and add that in here. And you just kind of need to think about what the usage of this room would look like. So if you think about it, you'd probably have something like a chair in the corner, maybe a light, um, just different pieces of furniture. You could also bring in a rug. And one thing to note is if you bring in the Lumion rugs, you can't really adjust their materials. But if you bring in, like I have a flat model from my SketchUp model that I can bring in, you can apply the new V-Ray Fur in version nine um, to this rug and you can actually adjust it but you can add something like the rug in here and then you could adjust this material so you could adjust this so the fur is a lot shorter something like this you could also do this with a rug that actually has like a with a rug that actually has a design on it if you wanted to but in this case we'll go ahead we've got a picture on the wall right here maybe bring in an object like a light and one thing to note when you're bringing objects in using the place tools, if you hold the R key and move your mouse, you can actually set the direction that your objects are facing um, by moving your mouse while you hold down the R key. And then we could also add something like a ceiling fan in the middle of this room as well. And so I'm going to kind of leave that room as is. I mean, one of the cool things about this, I mean, especially looking at this view, is you could render this just as is, and uh, it would look pretty cool. Um, obviously, we have some trees in here, and we may need to adjust that. But the other thing we could do if we wanted to is we could add, like, a spotlight. coming off of this lamp so we could just go into our lights and click on our spotlight and you could actually edit that light so that the cone angle is a little bit tighter um, you can set it on so it activates at night instead of during the daytime so like for example if you started lowering your sun height you can see how that light will turn on as it gets dark inside your model All right, so now we're going to move into the living areas and do kind of the same thing. But while in this space you'd have kind of a bed and a light and maybe a lamp, in this space you'd probably have more of a couch situation and some other things like that. So you just kind of want to think about um, what this space would have if it was a real living area. So we're going to go find some furniture that makes sense for this space. So in this case, um, probably we'll put a bookcase on the wall over here or a bookshelf on the wall. or maybe a couple of them. 
So I'll just put two of them right here. And then one of the things that's going to make your renderings more realistic is if you go in here and you add things like books. So like for example, if this was a bookshelf, um, it wouldn't just be a pair of bookshelves up here. It would actually have books on it and other things like that that you need to add in order to really make this scene have the detail that you need for it to feel realistic. And so there's several different groups of books inside Lumion's library that you can use in order to fill these in really easily. So you can see how I can just pick these selections of books and I can just start dropping them in here. And you do have to be careful to be kind of random with where you place these so that things don't look repetitive because what really kills a rendering like this is things looking repetitive. You want them to look kind of lived in and stuff like that. So for example, you could put like a pile of books right here. It's just kind of a question of taking this and just making it look realistic so that this building doesn't look really empty. Because you want it to look lived in. And so once you have your books in here, you just kind of need to think about this space and what this would look like. This is a little bit tighter than I meant for it to be originally. And so in this case, you probably, you might be able to fit a couch in here. Um, so you can just take this and look at a few of the couch options and see if there's anything in here that makes sense. Like maybe if we rotate this to the right a little bit. Um, and then you can tap the M key in order to move that around. And then we could come in here and we could add we could add a couple matching chairs or something like that as well. And again, all you're trying to do in this case is you're just trying to make this space look lived in. So if you wanted to, you could add something like a coffee cup and uh, maybe a picture on the wall as well. And you can take these and you can actually scale them up. So if I click on this, for example, whoops, so if I go down and I use the scale option, you can actually scale these pictures up while they're on the wall. And you can also adjust the brightness of the image that's on them. So these are really adjustable. And so again, you just kind of want to fill the space in. And the last thing I'm going to do in this case is I'm probably going to add maybe a floor lamp over here and another floor lamp over here. So you can see how this space is now kind of filled in as if it was kind of what you would do with this space in real life. So it's actually filled in with the things that you would need to live in this space. All right, so then one of the other things I'm going to do is I'm going to add a fire effect inside of my fire. So you can actually go into the effects library by clicking on effects and you can add a fire like where your fireplace is. So if I select one of these, I can actually move inside this space and I can actually click in here and I can place this fire as if a fire was burning in this space. And you can adjust things like the size, how big it is, but also how much it spreads, the number of particles that are in it, um, how wide out this is, so you can kind of adjust this until it kind of shows what you want it to be. So you can make it bigger, smaller, brighter, blue, green, whatever you want. So now this gives you a nice fireplace feel. So now based on the principles that I've talked about in this video, I'm gonna go through and I'm going to add in um, the rest of my objects in my model. And I'm just following the same steps as I was before. So I don't think I need to talk through it as I do it. So I'll kind of speed up this part of the video. Um, I'll also take this time to uh, ask you to please leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this kind of tutorial. Um, it kind of felt like it dragged on a little bit to me, but maybe you liked the level of detail that I got into. So uh, leave a comment below, let me know what you thought, and we'll get back to this in a second second and we'll talk about kind of exporting this.
All right, so that should get us fairly close on our living room area. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're going to export our render. And if you guys are interested, I may do another video a little bit later on, you know, lighting this for more of a, a night scene. For now, what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and create a render from our interior. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna turn our trees back on. So you can see how our trees um, really add something to the view from inside this building. And so once we do that, then we can actually um, we can set up our camera view. We don't even need to do that here. We're just going to go into camera or we're going to go into photo mode. And what photo mode is going to do is that's going to give us the ability to export our image. And so a couple things that you want to make sure you set up in here. So first of all, I'm going to pick one of my presets. So in this case, I think I'm going to pick... I keep going back to my realistic shadows for YouTube um, preset just because it is kind of realistic. It gives you a real good look. And so I will link to a video about the settings in this. What I want is something where the sun's shining through a little bit. And I'm actually going to adjust this and I'm going to add one of the real skies because I really do feel, feel like the lighting in those real skies when you bring those in really makes a difference on what you can do here. And so we'll go ahead and pick one of these real skies and we'll bring that in. And so now our scene is kind of set up. One thing you might want to think about at some point is you may want to think about using the weather settings to make this more of like a cozy interior scene. But for now, we have everything pretty much set up the way that we want it to be other than I'm going to go in and make sure that I have ref reflection planes included on this glass. So when you have reflection planes, um, Lumion's going to do a lot more calculation on the way the reflection look there. So I'm at a reflection plane there and I'm going to add a reflection plane here because the face of this would be glass as well. And then we're just going to click back and you can see how the reflections in here are a lot more realistic now that we've done that. And we're just going to go ahead and we're going to click the button for render photo. And I'm going to go ahead and render this and we'll see how it looks. So generally I feel like this image looks pretty good. One thing I really don't like though is this corner is really dark. So maybe what we want to do is we could either adjust our real sky so that the light is coming in from the other direction so that it's casting more light in that back corner. Maybe something like this. We've got more light back here now. So we could try that. So that brings that in a little bit better. But if there's one thing you notice looking out the window, it's that I forgot to turn the grass back on on the exterior. So a little attention to detail like that gets really important when you're creating renderings like this. So I can go ahead and click the button to turn that grass back on. So now that shows up in here a little bit better. So we can either render that with the sun showing back through there. I do have that set in a morning. So if I was to pick more of like a clear day or something like that, you'd get a little bit more sunlight. Things would be a little bit brighter. Um, you can see how this one with the sun higher, you're not really getting a whole lot of sun into your building. Um, so probably not going to pick that one. I'm probably going to pick one with this a little bit lower. So, but the other thing you could do in this back corner if you really wanted to is you could add a light. I'm going to talk a little bit more about lights a little bit later um, in another tutorial. But then now, if you remember, we filled in this room over here. So I want to create a rendering looking out this window as well. So maybe something a little bit more like this height. I wish we had a little bit better view of our mountains here. So one thing we could really do if we wanted to is we could actually remove a couple trees. So you definitely don't have to do that. But um, if you kind of think about it in a case like this, it would probably make sense because someone would probably remove a tree like that or a couple trees like that to get that mountain view in the background. So we'll go ahead and pull those out and we'll kind of see what kind of view that gives us in our space. All right, so for this one, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to pick a camera view, but in this case, I'm going to go into my custom styles. I'm just going to pick a daytime view, but then I'm going to go in and I'm going to add an effect for a real sky again, because again, those real skies really make a difference in how realistic all of these are. And so before we render this, there's one other thing that we need to do. If you remember what we did before, we need to make sure that our reflection planes are added in here. So you just go down to reflection and you just want to click the button for um, edit reflection plane. Make sure you add a reflection plane here and a reflection plane here. That's going to make your reflections a lot more realistic when you render this. And so I'm just going to make a couple minor adjustments and we'll go ahead and we'll render this as well. So we'll make this one interior 
bedroom. And there's a few things I do to improve this, but overall I'm very happy with the way that this turned out. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought was this helpful to you. Do you like the longer, more in-depth tutorials? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.